When one begins to realize that many of the ancient sites found here upon our planet have, throughout the years of modern study, only ever been attributed to civilizations we have actually been able to study in detail, rather than their true creators, a highly advanced group of individuals, once capable of constructing awe-inspiring structures using unimaginably huge blocks, fortresses perfectly built with stones placed together as if cut to size. These stone structures have come in many shapes and styles, yet undoubtedly the most impressive among the collection is polygonal walls. Many of the most popular are located within Peru, although their fascinating existence spans much further afield. Delphi was once an ancient sanctuary, famous for being home of Pythia, an oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient world. Interestingly, the Greeks considered Delphi the navel of the world, with a mysterious stone monument known as the Omphalos of Delphi, having once been placed there to signify this. Located on the southwestern slope of Mount Parnassus within Greece, undoubtedly the most compelling feature of the site and the one we feel indicates the true identity, and thus its actual immense age, is its polygonal wall. That, according to academia, was somehow built by the Greeks from around 510 to 323 BC. However, the site's wall, although rarely academically mentioned, is in fact lost knowledge, or more precisely, an advanced method of ancient construction that we are yet able to explain or unravel. We have long stated that many of the ancient sites around the world were seemingly built prior to some form of reset within human knowledge and development. Structures built with such skill and with such enormous blocks that these surviving remnants may be all that is left to now indicate their once existence. Thankfully, however, due to the unfathomed skill involved, these remaining fragments are, for all intent and purposes, out-of-place artifacts within our own history. Was the entire site merely reoccupied and claimed as another's creation? A claim conveniently allowing academics to avoid appearing out of their depth. Who built Delphi? When was it built? Were the ancient theaters, stadiums, and statues attributed to the Romans and the Greeks actually creations left by a people far older? With such unexplainable features at said locations, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have covered a number of ancient ruins that due to currently funded and passionately attested academic paradigm we strongly suspect are attributed to far more modern constructors. However, many of these ancient sites, if one spends a little time researching their origins and indeed the structural anomalous features involved in their construction, are often revealed to instead support the premise of a far more capable, advanced builder having once been responsible. Also by a group who were indeed far more ancient than academia would prefer you to suspect or entertain as a possibility. What's more, further supporting our posit, there are also many other factors of compelling evidence which support this hypothesis, with ancient texts often found within that, although often academically ignored, actually admit to the same reality of a prior constructor, sometimes attributed as gods, Yet additionally, the geological facts established by the study of the lands, which support such opinion, cannot be scientifically or historically denied. One of these sites is known as Inyavis. When we initially began to peruse this ancient site, the first and most striking feature one was confronted with were the intriguing structures found within, known as shipsheds. We have often postulated that the Greeks, and especially the Roman Empire, not only stole, or more precisely borrowed, a lot of ingenious inventions from a much older, far more advanced civilization, 
But it seems that in Yavis is another site, which could, in all possibility, further support this posit. This borrowing of technology and strategic design would have aided the Romans and Greeks, just like the Incas of Peru and the Egyptians of Giza, in an illusionary perception of strength and intelligence, which we feel undoubtedly helped these once successful civilizations flourish, expanding their empires across the globe. Although we were initially struck with the curious design of these ship sheds, designed like modern lifeboat houses to protect seagoing vessels from the ravages of the sea, the second realization which came very shortly after their initial study was the absence of any localized waterfront. Is it possible that they are far more ancient ruins, a pre-Diluvian site, that over countless millennia or possibly after the Great Deluge itself, lost its seafront positioning? This absence of a seafront could have been explained away due to numerous reasons. Yet when we further investigated the site, the telltale, anomalous, highly advanced, ancient building techniques, indicative of lost knowledge and thus lost civilization, soon began to surface all over this rarely academically shared site. We have in the past postulated, with what we believe is strong supporting evidence, that amphitheaters were another borrowed ancient ruin from a lost civilization a structure present at Inyaves, with some elsewhere, such as the supposed Greek ruin of Delphi that we revealed after in-depth observational investigation as having polygonal masonry present within the flooring of the theater. This as yet unexplained form of masonry is, unsurprisingly, also present at Inyaves a fact which not only supported our original suspicions of a far greater age, but we in fact predicted as being present, which we feel is now strong supportive evidence to suggest their original construction by the same lost civilization. Was Inyaves once on the sea's coast? That after the great deluge had subsided, was geologically stranded, left high and dry, by an undoubted change in the location of Earth's waters? Why would such a site that we instantly suspected to be a remaining remnant of a far older civilization indeed possess stone masonry indicative of such a hypothesis? Are all these factors a mere coincidence? Regardless of academic opinion or their attempted explanations of these as yet unexplained anomalies, we find Inyaves undoubtedly highly compelling.